Hello my darlings, welcome back to my channel, welcome back. If you're new, big warm welcome, I'm really pleased you could join me. I've got a couple of little things to share um, and then we're just going to crack on and start working on the journals I'm working on. So, um, Amy, our lovely friend Crafty Cat here on YouTube and the wonderful shop Crafty Cat USA over on Etsy, she has a couple of kits that are new out. So there's this one called Purple, it's kind of a mini kit, it's only three pages and you have some lovely images in the purple shades of, you've got a couple of images of ladies like these and then you've got some postage stamps here and here and then the last page of them this butterfly here and this lady, oh and this lady and butterfly here. These images have like a birthday sentiment on them. But they can, if you don't want to use them for birthday, you can easily cover that up with embellishments and whatnot. But if you do want them for birthdays, you can print them off and change the sizes so that you've got a size that's for the kind of um, sized card that you want, whether it be smaller or bigger. And when you change the sizes, they came out lovely. So I wanted to quickly share that kit. And then we've got the very latest hot off the press kit called, I want to see if I've got the right way out, this way, Buttons. And this kit is 23 pages, if I remember rightly, and which I think I do. <laughs> and I think this is a really versatile kit because... I'm working on a couple of journals at the minute that are very different in their style and I think this kit, there's elements and pages in it that go really well with say this end of the spectrum that could be Victorian shabby chic kind of style right to the other end of the spectrum where you get your bohemian, um, Indian inspired or old travelling gypsy or um, circusy kind of vibe, you know. So there's pages in here that can suit everything. And so I don't know whether I've said it before, but for this kit especially, I think if you purchase this one, you're good to go with so many different styles and that. And you know, once you've purchased a digital kit, for those of you that haven't done it before, you've, you've got them images now and you can keep printing them off, resizing them and using them as long as you don't try and pass the work off as your own. So you can use them to make your journals that you go on to sell but you can't sell or share the um, kit as a digital kit or just print it off and sell it like, oh, I'm selling you this. You can use all these images in your journals, but yeah, you know what I mean. And there are terms and conditions on all the different Etsy sellers and sellers that aren't on Etsy that sell digital kits, but yeah. I'll just crack on because, like I said, for me, I think this is really um, versatile. So, we've got this lovely page with all these buttons on the lace here. And then we've got this lovely lady on top. There's the lace and the buttons and we've got this lovely rose and a stamp. We've got this gorgeous um, embroidery fabric that just looks wonderful it looks so real you know it's like you've got your nana's old tablecloth and it it just looks so real if you've got it down you someone looking at the page you'd be hard pressed to know whether that was a digital stitch or an actual real stitch that's what i like about this page then we have this one, we've got the lovely text over the top and some aged paper and library card and that and 
beautiful bows there. And we've got this lovely lady. And then we have this page. And we've got the postcard. We've still got flowers. We've still got the buttons. Like continuing through as a theme throughout. We've got this one. And like I said, say like these pages, these old fashioned ladies might lend more to a shabby or vintage style, you know, but that bit could be in any kind of theme style, as you'll see, because I will be using some of them for bohemian style journals, as well as um, like shabby or victorian -y style journals. And what I really like are these pages of like the fabrics because this is where I think the versatility really comes into its own because I cannot wait now to use this in the um, new journals that I'm working on which one of them is a boho style and I just think they're just going to look lovely. And here we've got that fabric again but with a lady on and you can see they're just so versatile like you could either size this down or you could cut that bit off and have that you know um i, I really do love them and yeah i would you can be the, your own judge once i've finished the journals that i'm working on and like just see for yourself and decide for yourself whether you feel they're as versatile as I do, but I'm sure you will. Look at these gorgeous colours. I really love how uh, in some parts it's a really, really faint duck egg. And then you've got like shades of more vibrant blue and the darker bits and greeny brownies with the ageing. I just think that is fabulous. And then we've got this lovely sort of pinky with browns and going more lilac-y in some areas bits of blue and i think i've printed that page off twice oh no that might be no i have printed that one off twice <laughs> and then yeah this lovely pinky brownie in some areas a little bit orangey i just love it and we've got these lovely kiddies on here and you can see there's parts of that fabric that you saw um early on in the kit all bringing it together and tying it in and yeah i just think it's superb and i can't wait to use it and use it for something different other than like what i would if i was using the images of the ladies in an older style journal and then we've got three pages of elements after 20 pages of um, just normal page which you don't have to use them for a normal page you can cut them up use them for whatever you want to use them you know but they are there as entire book pages if that's what you want and so we've got this lovely library pocket we've got a greeting card here this little image of the lovely shoes, stamps and that gorgeous flower. And then we've got some more stamps here. And little letters and advertisements and images. They're just gorgeous. I really like them. And then we've got a couple more postcards and images and an advertisement. And so that is buttons and you saw previously the one called purple with the three pages both available now in amy's shop which is crafty cat usa over on etsy and they're really reasonably priced and i think they're wonderful so let's just crack on and see what we're going to do right at the moment i'm working on a couple of journals that are smaller so I could go ahead and resize the whole of the kit if I wanted to, to fit into a smaller journal. Or what I'm going to do is just cut them, not quite in half, almost in half, because I'm working on one journal that's a little bit bigger 
and one that's a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna cut all of these and then we'll sort out how we want them. Right, as I said, I wanted to do one a bit smaller than the other because that's the kind of size journal I'm working with is those two different sizes. And what I'm gonna do is either sew or stick that them together like this so then i've got these gorgeous colored pages that look really lovely and so i might have one odd one left over which is fine and i'm going it's that one because of the whiteness i will just put that straight into a journal as it is and those three i'm going to sew together so i think i want to do the same in the smaller one even though it's going to be different and oh just separating what i want with what right oh and so now we've got our pairs and with some of them i think i'm just going to glue them and maybe leave open the top or the side so that it becomes a pocket and on some i might sew down like that or just sew two straight lines across so again we can come in from the side or from the top wherever the mood takes my fancy so i just think they are going to make a brilliant base and look absolutely wonderful in the journals I'm working on. So I'm going to quickly pop over to my sewing machine and sew the ones I want to sew and then we can crack on with gluing and sorting out the rest. Right, so here I am back with both my pieces sewn and I used the same black cotton and the same stitch and I went in the same direction. So what I'll now end up with is four pages in a journal that share a pocket at the top. And so now we can just crack on, start decorating and make these pieces very different and looking like they're not from the same kit at all. Right, so starting out with this one first, I'm going to do some stamping. And this one is going to be a kind of sort of oldie weldy come nature sort of vibe, right? So I'm going to just put it in place on my stamping platform. Ideally, before you sew pages together and things like that, do your stamping then. But I wasn't quite decided of where I wanted anything, of my stitching or anything like that. So I thought I'll just crack on and do it in this order. But normally I wouldn't. Right, so let's think. I no, I want this big B. I think I'm going to have up there. Well, that's quite a big B for the size of the page. So, maybe not. Maybe one of these smaller Bs might be a bit better. It's a little bit smaller. Or this B that does have be happy above it but as you know you can cut these stamps and they are fine I don't want to get these little antennas are they called that I don't might not even I don't even think they're called that but you know what I mean I think on a butterfly it's a spiracle isn't it I don't know I'm trying to sound cleverer than I am <laughs> It seems like everything I've I learned at school and that has just leaked out of my brain. Right. Um, 
remembering that this is we just that's the size of the page I think the smaller one I have got ones even smaller but I think they're too cartoon like so this one is a bit but not as much as the smaller ones so I'm just gonna use my dis vintage photo I think if I want it darker I can put something else on top but yeah these are a gorgeous set of insects insects but I think they're too big see that like that I think is more in proportion so I like that and let's think um, I don't know whether I want one over here could have one on a button if I wanted or just peeping out over there oh no that it would have to be on this side could go there or yeah all my other insects are big unless I've got a re-rummage I don't really fancy doing that so I'm going to pop him there and I might need a little bit more ink on that one I think that's moved I'm not going to chance it that will be fine I felt a slight shift of my little bee as I press the ink onto it right so now I'm going to get my little page and on here which would still be perfect for the other theme but I'm mixing it up and using this one in another journal and you know as well as I do that you can use the same kit over and over again and give, get a different result every single time which is wonderful and yeah I just thought I'd have a play around doing that today especially for those of you that don't normally buy a kit or maybe you're thinking of buying one but then thinking you'll be stuck with something that you bought for that one journal that you're never going to use again which is so not true right, that's gone on there quite faint but it's what I want because just I've got to make sure I don't move it I'm going to try and get a bit of different colour around the edges but I'm touching ever so gently because I don't want to move the stamp so I'm just holding it waiting for the colour to transfer a little bit and yeah I have got a little bit of different colour around the edges um, if I possibly can Let's try and get a little bit of blue in the middle. I don't know if I've touched that enough. I'll wipe it off there. Just a faint little bit. Which is what I want. And now, see, I've got that colour, but it's not really dark because I've got these lovely patterns. So I just wanted that muted kind of feel on there. And then I'm going to do something different on this side. I might need to do something more there. No, let's go over here. Oh, right, so I've got a lovely peacock feather. And again, I want to try with a few, a couple of different colours. Oh, I 
like that. I really like that. I might want a little bit of green. Yeah, it just changed the colour of the leaves. So I've got blue and then little bits of green on the tip. Right, so starting with this side, I found in with my ribbons this gorgeous bee ribbon which I really want to use as a tuck spot but I don't want to hide my stitching on this side at least so what I'm going to do I think is I need to just go a little bit longer there and fray this end and maybe take a bit off the other end and refray it so that it's sitting like that yeah, I can lose a little bit here and give it a little fray and see if that fits sitting like that so that when we fold we won't lose either of the bees it's just going to be a little tuck spot but yeah coming above there but before we do that I've got a button and keeping it all um, a bit of continuity throughout I'm going to sew the button just onto the edge here before I glue it down as my little tuck and yeah it's just a little bit of decoration but oh and I've got to remember that the I've got the tiniest bit of cotton. <laughs> well, it's not cotton, it's waxed thread on there from sewing in signatures the other day. Oh, look, another. It's too short. I'll grab another bit. And I have got another bit right here that was an off cut. That's just a little bit longer. And I'm picking up the dropped button, which I need. Right, let's see if I can do this in one go. Um, maybe not. No. Nope. Right, so I've got my thread. And, yeah, I'm keeping with the nice thick linen thread so that you'll be able to see it quite quick, clearly when it's holding the button in place it's decorative really i could have glued the button on but i thought it'll probably be better and more sturdy if i sew it on because as well if i glued it on then i might have glued more of the tuck closed than i wanted but it's a fine line between getting it where you can still see the bee and still see the little bit of the fraying as well. I think that will probably be okay. If not, I can pull it out do it again. No, I like that in that position. So I'll just tie it off and then cut it short. Oh. probably be fine and yeah like I said I fancy putting the glue um, it just above this stitching so I'm gonna try and get a small bead of this brain killing strong glue which I shouldn't say that really but it really does smell lethal this new one, I'm used to the other one, which my whole family reckons smells strong, but I don't think it's nowhere near what the new one I've got is. My family always say, look, because I don't use it anymore, like if ever the children are over or anything like that, because before I could block myself away, 
but I can't now. But um, yeah, this one, I oh, definitely can't. I can like because normally if I can be in another room with the other one, and it's fine. But whew, I wouldn't with that. Right now that is nicely positioned so that we've got a nice little tuck there and there and we've got our button for continuity and then on this side i thought i might go really fancy although it is a small journal i think that might be too much of a thrill for the journal that i'm working on at the minute so let's see what about that Oh, I do like that. I like that a lot. I think I'm going to have that. I'm trying to get it as close to the bottom as possible, but this one will cover the stitching. And you'll see a tiny little bit of it on the other side. On the underneath, which is nice. Just trying to get it along that bottom line, like that. And it's probably easier to press down from this side so it dries. That's it. I really like that because it's you can still see the um, stitching on this side, and we've got the lovely trim. And then obviously it's facing front ways, the trim like that. But yeah, I do like that that it can be seen from both sides, and it's not too much. So I'm pleased with that. Right, and what else did I want? I think I might use a bit over here, a bit of paper made into a pocket from the kit. Right, I am taking this lovely sheet and like I said, you can print these kits off like up to 250 times as long as you are only printing them off to use in your own journals. So I don't feel too bad about tearing this bit of paper the way I am because like I said I can reprint this in full size for a journal and also do something like this where you're thinking no don't ruin it but I do like that big button and I like the torn edge you'll get where I'm going in a minute because remember our page sizes are only like that so we can't have anything too massive I might need to take a bit off of that um, that might be right I might what I'm doing yeah, I think I want some of the lace showing and some button. Right, let's grab the ink first. And then I'll start that sentence again of what I am doing. Okay, so this is just quite thin copy paper. It's not the cheapest one, but it's not the most expensive one either. Right, I could have printed this on something thicker. If I knew that I was going to decide now to make a pocket out of it, but I didn't know when I started this video that that was where my brain was going to take me. Because sometimes we don't, do we? Sometimes we have very clear objectives of what we are doing, and then other times we can be quite whimsical and just sort of go with the flow. 
you know and I oh, quite often fall into the latter group but yeah not always right I need to see no that is way too big it's too deep and it's too wide so I kind of like no Okay, we get a bit more ink on the bottom or the top. We don't know what yet. And let's see. That kind of looks a little bit better. I wanted a bit more of the lace though, so I'm going to move my fold to there. I quite like that. Let's shut the thing over. Yeah, I do quite like that. So, all I need to do, though, I don't like that, um, the way that it's torn there. So, I need to take the smallest smidge off. Like that. Oh, I didn't throw it away. I just kept it looped around my finger by something invisible. Uh, yeah, nice bit of ink on there and what I'm going to do now is before I glue this down I'm going to nip over to the sewing machine and sew down the sides and across the bottom right I'm just still playing with it getting it how I want it Yeah, I can come in a little bit more. And then what I will do, because I want it reinforced so that the, it's not just a really thin pocket. So I'm going to glue across the top once that has been inked and that. And then I'll take a bit off of here and you don't need it don't need to be neat that bit because you're not going to see it and then I'm going to stitch around all three bits and before that I'm just going to glue the middle shut so that things will slide in and out nicely and not catch on anything right. which is why I push the glue to the edge like that so that now that will be properly properly flat. Anything going in and out isn't going to catch because I've just pushed all the glue and all the strength of the glue to that edge. So I'm just going to stitch around here and I'll be right back. Right, so I've stitched around my pocket and like I said, there's no way that anything there is going to catch. So I can now glue it on. And then I want it just inside the stitching like that. Oh. And let's close that a sec. Yeah, I like that in that position. I'm ready for something to go inside. And then, so then now we've got pocket at the top and a pocket in there we've got this tuck that will be on both pages that one and that one and obviously they've both got a big pocket at the top and then that's that side I'm not sure what else I might want over there but back here what I want is I like this and like I said it's I'm doing it a bit naturey which is why I put the bees on I'm just going to cut a little bit and I 
did want it straight and I can see that that is a bit wonky. It needs a little tiny bit took off. Like that. I don't want that bit at all. <laughs> right, let's start again. I'm just going to do a snip, and however it comes out is what we're having. Right, I want that. I've got a little button, and I'm going to get a little garment pin here, a little bulb pin, already. Um, right, oh. It's a bit of a broke one. And what I'm going to do is just pop the button on first. I could do with a smaller button, really, I think. Because I wanted the button and then, oh no, that would probably be alright. The button and the fabric. And I was just going to pin it just to this. And get that in there like that. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So that is what that will look like on the page. I've just got pinned there my button and my little bit of fabric. And so I'm quite liking the look of that. And I might start working on the tags in a minute. But before that, I'm going to make a few changes to this bit this pieces of sewn paper and then we'll start seeing how different they begin to look. So now I'm going to start on this little one and remember I just did that little bit of stamping and now I want to shush it all up a bit and make it lovely like how I feel the other one is starting to come but very different, you know. So I've got this little off cut and I think it'll fit perfectly as a pocket there. And when we fold it, that's our page. So I really like that in from the stitching. I just think it looks quite nice. So I'm going to put the glue onto the fabric so that I can see exactly where I'm putting it and how much I need and just coming in a little bit from the edge I fancy it about there and it's a nice proportioned pocket for that page I also wanted to put some trims down the side with this one so I've got this funky one for that side and I'm thinking this one along this side now I get all of these really fancy trims from my lovely friend Zach over on eBay and I will leave you a link to her shop down in the description box down below because let's face it these trims are just gorgeous and there is loads of them I've got more to show you in a bit and yeah they're truly truly lovely and they're so reasonably priced and she does loads of other things as well little bits and bobs charms and all sorts of stuff and it's just wonderful the amount of choice and the quality and brilliant brilliant colors stuff that you don't see every day like maybe like down your eye street or your market and that but they're just wonderful so i really like that one well i really like them all and i've got loads let me just grab a couple to show you trims like this and like this just there's loads so i'm not going to grab them all out otherwise we'd be here all day but don't you think they're fabulous and so on this side i'm going to have this one 
because then when the book is shut we'll have loads and loads of really cool things coming out of the side and I really like that no matter what style journal I'm doing like if I'm doing like a kind of shabby style there'll be loads of lace and that and then with this I do like to go all out with the colour and the different types of trims because I think it really really adds to the style that I like to do there's a lot of different ways people do boho and I've done them different ways before depending on what people want like if they've made a custom order or that but what I like to do most is just open all my boxes with all the different colours and just let myself go wild just sort of working my way making it up as I go along with what colours are going where what I'm going to grab out next and I find that I have great fun doing that and I also end up with some really lovely end results so I am there's, that needs to slightly come down I think although mm, yeah it looks a little bit wonky but it's no drama I just need a little bit of glue back on there and along here um, to get that in a straighter line that is it that's fine that's better. I didn't realise when I was putting it on that it was a little bit wonky. But that looks much better now. And I'm not worried about that bit because I'm going to put something, a small bit bit of trim, just there, you know. Um, just to hide that little fraying bit of an edge. And I've got, sorry I'm just rummaging behind me. I've got some lovely sparkly ribbon that I'm just going to put like that so I want a straight edge because it's just going to go there oh. 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 I need to get them new scissors don't I if you didn't watch the video when I said about it my daughter used them to cut out photographs my fabric scissors so now they don't always cut when I need them to because they cut paper. And it's not like she did loads, but she did, yeah, she did cut out like a few, maybe half a dozen or so photographs with the wrong scissors. And yeah, they, I don't think, unless you're like ours and you, you use them all the time, you wouldn't think that just using them that one day that one little 20 minutes or so that she was cutting some bits out for me bless her some photographs that it would have such a such an impact on the scissors but it does does it so yeah a new a new pair of on my list of to do's now on the inside what i thought was i want this trim and it's gorgeous look at that and so right i'm going to measure it up where i need it to um let's see from here over to there is going to be my last bit now between the pink and the yellow so, I need my glue before I cut to make sure that those fibres won't all undo and then I end up one by one with my little ball balls dropping off. So, I've put a bit of glue in between the pink and the yellow and I'm just going to set that aside for the minute to properly dry. And then we'll have no drama. I won't gunk up my scissors. And I also won't have ball balls unfreddling and falling off. So, 
while we're waiting for that, I was thinking, I'm not sure whether I want a belly band, because this, the little um, trim there, once it's stuck along here, won't be a pocket. As you can see, it's very, very narrow, right? So it won't be a pocket or that. But it will form a little lip so that something there could, if it was held in by a belly band, won't go any further. So I'll just let that dry for a little bit longer and grab something for our belly band. I think... I quite like this. It's not too wide because like our pages are only small, so I don't want something too wide. And I don't want anything too bulky either. So I think this is just about right. So I'm going to pop a bit of glue at each end. And also a little blob in the middle as well. I know it'll be, once it's bound in, It'll be held in place, but I want this held quite tightly. So that's why I've added the extra bit of glue in the middle because we are only working with these tiny little pages. And if it's not being stitched through, it could be a little bit loose which I don't want so I think that is perfect and I'm gonna just give it a little trim hopefully with my scissors that's it yeah and another one at this end so that's our belly band I like that and back to our little thing we glued in between the pink and the yellow and that glue there is now gone nice and tacky so we know that our um, threads aren't going to go missing and just right across the bottom with our glue oh. and this look you see even though I've glued that one is coming loose I've got to pull it tight oh it's so annoying when it does that look you see and one's come off. Right, so. Right, so I've got that bit there. And I've come with this bit instead of the other bit because it did have a fraying part. So some of these ball balls was loose. So I'm going to trim here. Make sure that that is well glued. And then come in like that. Right. And push him right down to make sure that behind it's well stuck down. And then none of your little ball balls will work their way loose and with my friend's axe trims you never get any of that but this is from Amazon where I used to hunt for these and yeah sometimes they're not great and you end up with bits coming loose and falling off so that there will work as our lip. Let's grab a tag and stop it falling out the bottom, you see, which is perfect. 
for us because it's not too bulky and it just adds loads of colour and it's really pretty in my opinion. So, once we get our bits in, that will be quite enough in there. We've got our pocket this side. I just want something over here and maybe something like this as a pocket. Let's grab my other scissors. A bit of a tuck going on. Um, right, so we'd have to come from about there. And I'm just going to freehand up and around so that we've got a nice big corner pocket like that. But I think I'm going to come up again above the stitching just because it adds a bit of extra interest. I might even stitch around this. Yeah, I think I want to do that. Right, so I've stitched around. I've trimmed in a little bit more so that it will sit nicely like that. Or shall I come up there? Yeah, I'm just going to trim these strings off because I don't want them in my way. And, oh, try and get the lid undone without spilling all the glue everywhere. lovely trim that I get down my market and I think that lovely bright green flower will look gorgeous against the pink really stand out um, red top keeps getting stuck in the corner like that and right, let's see we've got a pocket there and that one there we've got our nice belly band and our little lip down there with our tassels on or our ball balls rather that where we will be able to tuck our bits and of course it's open at the top so, I'm just going to grab a few bits and pieces and that and do some final finishing touches and then I'll bring the other one back and we'll have a look at how different they seem to be from the same kit. So, I've now just added, oh, and I've just dropped, <laughs> I've just added my little finishing touches, um, what didn't you see? Oh, on this one I just added a flower there I think everything else you've seen and so I'll go inside and in here I've just put a couple of journaling cards and a big tag from oh, I can't remember where um, but yeah I put them in our little bee tuck there there's another little one and I've got a bit of Edith Holden there. I've stamped a bee on it and it's a little bit um, from Midsummer Night's Dream. We've got a little bee there. I'm throwing these um, <laughs> little journaling cards everywhere. And then at the back, in that little pocket that we made, I just put, I think that was from Denise one time, and that was gifted to me. I've just popped those in there and I've made a big tag with a ruffle so that um, um, what else have I put in there? Just a couple. That one's from the kit, definitely. And you have another just little journaling card. Oh, and this little nursery rhymes. It's all a bit old-fashioned-y. Um, 
and I thought it went well with the rest of the little bits of ephemera. So in the journal, that will just, hang on, it won't sit nicely if that's not right. That will just sit nicely. Let grab an envelope for a minute. So yeah, on the page that side and that side. So you can see what it would look like against another page. So that is that one. And then from the exact same kit, I've made this one from another journal I'm working on. So you did this one, we did this one together, the pocket, and I've just put a tag in there. I've put a nice big journaling card at the top with a double layer of pom-poms. So that once the journal's all bound together, there'll be lots of bits and bobs coming out everywhere. We... I made that little ledge and it does keep the things from falling out as you can see so I've popped a tag and a journaling card there and a tag there and then I made well I cut out a little one like that and I just did this one and I've peg, um, pinned a little charm to it there and oh I added that flower didn't I on camera yeah and so I just did another big journaling card. Oh, I grabbed hold of the, um, what do you call it, ribbon as I pulled this one out. And I did the same with the pom-poms, just in different colours. And they slide right in and sit nicely. A bit similar to what I've done with the sari silk on the top of this. Because then when it's bound in... It'll all poke out the top, but yeah, we've got lots going on from either side. So, one kit and just a couple of ideas. Obviously, once these journals are complete, you'll be able to see how I've used like other pages or bits and bobs throughout them and be able to see how versatile a kit like this is. You know, you're not just buying it to make one style and one style only of journals. Because I don't work like that. I use all different types of things and I make all different style journals. I don't stick to just one genre. I just like sort of float around from here to there and back again, you know. But, yeah, I just thought it might help if you was considering buying a kit for the first time to be able to see that they're not just a one-trick pony, you know. So, I'm sure most of you that um, buy kits and that, you will know that. But some people have never bought one before and they want to know what they're letting themselves in for. So, there we have it. Thank you very much, Amy, who provides me with these lovely kits so that I get the chance to show you guys what I can do with them or how they inspire me. So I'll link all of her details of her channel, Crafty Cat, and her shop, Crafty Cat USA, on Etsy. I'll link all of that down below, including this new kit, Buttons. And I'll be back with something that probably featuring more of the Buttons kit and the Purple kit very very soon so thank you amy my darling i love you to all my subscribers or people that are just popping in thank you so much i really do appreciate you i love all of my subscribers dearly and yeah i'll be back with something really really soon love you bye for now bye